Hello, YouTube family, and thanks for joining us today on episode six. I can't only put up one hand at a time. <laughs> episode six of our shed build. Well, today we're going to end up putting the purlins on the top of the, um, the roof trusses, and then we're going to be putting in the header board and the 4x4 four four posts on the back side of the trusses on the overhang so that they'll support that portion of the roof. So come along with us as we begin to work on these. Before you get started, there's a couple of things that you might want to consider having to make the job go quicker. Besides the obvious tools for fastening, whether it's going to be nails or screws, uh, and things to measure and make sure that you're square with, you're going to want to have a number of size uh, of sizes of clamps to use because the lumber that you're going to get at the store today, the big box stores, is anything but good lumber. It's got all kinds of, of whoop and wharf in it, uh, the crown, it's just, it's not the best. And so you're going to need to pull the wood to the position that you're gonna want it. So you're gonna want things to spread boards apart, to pull boards together, and then to fasten boards in the place that you want them to stay at. Also, another thing to have as you're thinking about this is uh, pre-cut pieces of wood to make sure that your spaces between your uh, trusses and, um, uh, and your purlings are the same space all the time. Uh, let me flip this around and show you what I mean. We put our trusses 16 on center. And so we're gonna wanna have a 14 and a half inch space between each board. However, these boards are gonna have warps in them. They're gonna be concave, convex. And we're gonna make sure that we want to pull those boards to the 14 and a half inch space that's supposed to be between them. So you cut a 14 and a half inch board uh, and then clamp it and pull it tight uh, together. And then when it comes to the purlins, the purlins, uh, you want uh, 24 on center. And so the space between those is going to be 20 and a half inches. And so we have gone ahead and we have cut a board to 20 and a half inches and to 14 and a half inches. Our longer clamps will hold those two in place. And then our smaller clamps will secure the one by four onto uh, the uh, on, onto the trusses. S that way, as you end up going all the way across, your board is the same distance between purlins and it brings your uh, trusses to the same uniform space between trusses. So let's go ahead and let's get started on this.
So you get the idea. Uh, I'm not going to uh, have you suffer through in uh, regular speed me putting every single purlin up. Uh, what I'll go ahead and do is set this on time lapse and uh, finish the job, but uh, you got a good idea. Uh, that aspect of making sure that uh, the space between each purlin is the same all the way across every joist. So when you put your metal roof up uh, and you cut and or you drill all your holes ahead of time, that those all line up in the exact same place. And then uh, you saw me forget at one point in time to put my, um, uh, my spacer between my uh, 16 on center and I had to back out those screws, pull that in and then put those screws back down. Uh, it's important to do that if you want a nice, uh, tight, a uh, straight square as possible uh, roof and shed or building whatever you're going to be building it's good to make sure that all those spaces are uniform so let's go ahead and go back up and put this on time lapse and let's get this part of the job finished Welcome back. It's only been a couple of seconds for you, but it's been several days for me. I've been working at getting the purlins up on the trusses up on top. Uh, let me show you how far we've gotten and why we have to stop and now move to the next stage to make all of this work. As you can see, we've gotten all of this done to about, oh, I don't know, four feet past the back plate of the shed. But now we're gonna to have to take the time to put my four by four posts into the ground and get my back header up. Here's why. I think you can already begin to see. If you see the curve in this board coming out, it's getting more difficult for me to spread these, line these up uh, nice and straight uh, with the purlins because they're not only curved this way on some of them, but let me step down off my ladder and show you the other issue that we have. We also have the fact that the board is also tilty. So what'll ha uh, what will help with this is if I get the header board up, we come out, we mark all of our 16 on centers, we get everything lined up and we get this end pulled out and straightened up. It'll make putting these last two purlings on a whole lot easier. So now we're going to mark the areas for where our four by four should go. And let me show you how I'm gonna do that. I've simply taken a screw and I've driven it into the base plate of our outside wall and connected a string to it and then ran the string all the way back and then gave it another anchor point right here, wrapped it around uh, the end of that base plate. And then I continued on all the way back here. Now, to line the outside edge up with where the post is going to be right here, I simply came up, drove another screw into the outside edge of this board, 
This board is actually one of the straightest boards we have. I took my two straightest boards and put them on the outside edges because I knew I was going to do this. So I've got a nice straight line coming all the way back. And then I put it about where I want my header board to hit and run down this way. I simply ran a string with a nut on the end of it right there and I then lined up this string with the string that's coming down and I get whoops excuse me tripped over a uh, stump so I I have right where the center of my 4x4 four four will have to go and it lines up with the outside edge of the shed and it lines up with the outside edge of the uh, the truss here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply gonna take uh, some orange uh, ground mark spray paint. I'm going to put it right where those two intersect on the ground, make a nice big area. And then I'm just gonna do all the hard work of taking a pulse hole digger and a spud and digging it uh, all out two feet down in order to place my four by four. All right, so my hole is dug about two feet down, but here's what we need to do, or at least what I need to do to make this work in my head. To get this to line up as well as I can with this mark over on the far side, I'm going to drop and set this post on this side. And then when I go to set that post, um, on the other side, I will then level square and line up with the post over on this corner. And now this is not a two by six, but let's pretend it is. I need my four by four to be seven feet, one inches from grade to the top where the trusses will rest on the header board. So this needs to be cut to nine feet, one inches two feet into the ground, seven feet, one inches above. However, we're also going to notch this out. This line here is my nine feet, one inch. I'm gonna have a two by six header setting on it just like this. So what we'll have to do is once we get this cut, we will have to notch out a shelf on which the two by six header will set. I know I could just bolt it onto this, but by putting it, uh, notching it out and putting it here, um, I'm gonna get another level of support uh, on here uh, than, uh, than just simply bolting it in. So we're gonna notch this to fit the two by six. Let's go ahead and make the cuts. And then once we get uh, this post all set, we will then go ahead and get some concrete post, uh, or, or, uh, post concrete uh, that I've gotten back of the truck. We'll set this up. Uh, we'll get the concrete poured in, we'll get it all square and plumb, and we'll wait for it to dry. And as we're waiting for it to set and dry, we'll go ahead and dig the other hole and get ready for that. We'll go ahead and get ready for that one over there. And we'll also get the second two uh, four by four cut and get everything ready to go.
I've reconnected my plumb lines up going this way and this way because when I put this four by four into the ground, I want it to line up with this outside corner. If I've got it too far over this way, um, it's not gonna be good or even too far uh, in this way, although I can't go that, that far that way because of the nature of the hole. Let's go ahead and mix up some concrete and get this post set. What this requires is that we put half the bag in the hole with a half a gallon of water. And then we take a stick or, or something and we mix it all up, tamp it down, get the air bubbles out of it. Then we take the other half of the bag, pour it in to, to the hole and then take the rest of the water and also mix it up. Uh, after we get done doing that, uh, we'll check uh, level and plumb again. And once that is complete, uh, we'll make sure this is nice and set. And then we'll go ahead and start digging that hole. The concrete is set and we have checked for plumb and square all over again. Let's come around here. This one, I get messed up a little bit. There he goes. Again, not too bad. I think that's pretty stinking good. To help keep this video from going too long, I'm gonna go ahead and dig out that hole and I'm gonna do all the work on this side as I did the other side. And I will bring you back when I'm ready to put up the two by six header to stretch all the way across. The hole is dug, the post is set, and I have cut it on top. But one of the things that I wanna make sure of, other than that this is plum, is that this post is level with that post. So what I've done is I have taken a screw and screwed it in on top. And then I have taken a screw on the other side and also screwed it on top. And then I've ran a line all the way across. And then I got my float level and put it on to see where I'm at. Now, we'll see if we can see this or not. Oh, focus. Let's see if we can get this to focus at all. There we go. Now, that ain't too stinking bad. As my drill sergeant in uh, boot camp said, got a calibrated eyeball. I guess I could come up just a little bit on my left, uh, but I tell you what, I am very, very happy with that. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this post put in concrete and, and plumbed up and I'm gonna leave this line here. I am gonna go ahead and drop my line on the outside. That one's not too straight, but we'll, we'll work with it. Uh, drop my line down and then pull my other line back across so I can make sure I can line it up right in the corner. I tamped down the inside of the hole. So um, as I move that around, my hole uh, on the bottom is nice, fairly flat and level. So I'm not going to have to worry about it going off level from post to post. Uh, really quick, one more thing. As I was digging this, um, we used to live up in West Michigan. And the biggest problem with uh, digging a hole was having the hole continue to fill in because everything was sand. <laughs> um, here in Southwest Ohio, this does concrete. This clay, when it dries out and then... I've got a tree line, so I've got roots, I've got rocks. If you do not have, now, I'm not sure what the proper name for this is. My, my father-in-law used to call this a spud bar, all right? It's uh, sharp at one end, or kind of sharp, it's pointed at one end. And this spud bar weighs 16 pounds. Now they make them in all kinds of weights. This old man can handle 16 pounds. Uh, I've watched my uh, middle son, who's a beast of a guy, uh, handle a 24 pound spud bar um, with vengeance. Uh, but me, this one does a number on me. But it was great because, buddy, I had to go through tons and tons of roots uh, digging this hole over here. So again, 
uh, besides having a post hole digger where you're at, it would be a wise investment to get a spud bar. Uh, I, uh, they're, not, they're not very expensive, seriously. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful tool to have. I've used it uh, on many occasions for um, many different types of jobs. So, so today we're going to end up finish, uh, finishing this part of the project by affixing our trusses onto the ledger or header board on the back. I went out and picked up some uh, new brackets. These will go on the back side of the ledger board. And I'll be using these screws, specific screws for brackets such as this. Uh, these weren't, I think, too terribly expensive. They were about $8 for a box of 50. And then instead of using bolts, washers, and nuts to uh, put my ledger board onto my four x four posts, uh, I ended up buying these ledger lock architectural screws, 12, and they cost about $12, so about a buck a piece. It comes with its own bit. This also came with its own bit here. So I'll go ahead and flip this camera around, show you what things are looking like. I temporarily put my ledger board up uh, last night at the end of everything and got it fixed on the ends with a couple of leftover hurricane straps. Uh, but again, today we just got to really bring this project to an end because I've got stuff to do this next week that's going to make it impossible for me to work on the shed. So as you see, I've got the ledger board up nice, nice and level. Uh, and I went ahead and got two hurricane straps on the very end. Uh, I lined these up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, those other brackets, put them on the back side of the ledger board and uh, get these all squared away and straightened hopefully hopefully get my last two purlings up and then uh, i'm also going to take those ledger lock architectural screws and drive them in through here so let's go ahead and get this started <laughs> Let me just take a moment really quick to show you why this is maybe taking so long. If you remember previously, I showed you the bow and the boards. This side of this board is to be on this side of this line. And so we've got quite a ways to go. And so how I'm doing that is I am taking my clamps and I have reversed the one side and I'm using the clamp to push the board that way. Now let me just give you an idea. See how that's pushing the board? And we just keep doing that and cranking that until the board gets approximately to the place it needs to be. But now what I have to do is I have to pull this board down. So I use this clamp to pull the board down. And then once I have it in place, I put in my brackets and do my screws. Boy, I'm not sure if that's focusing well or not. It's hard for me to see. I'm looking through my bifocals and I've got the sunlight. So anyway, I put the bracket on and then once it in, it's in place, I can release all my clamps. And for the most part, I get a straight board. Look at that. Well, this part of the project is finished. Let me flip the camera around and show you the purlins and the back supports, and then tell you what we're gonna do next. We've got all the purlins on. We have our header board up, our posts in the ground. We have all of our brackets finished. That did a wonderful job getting all of those boards pulled straight and getting the curve out of them. Really excited about this portion. Now, we have to wait an entire week and a half to get our uh, steel roof in. Uh, I'm having it cut to 20 foot lengths, so I don't have to piece anything together. And I've got all the accoutrements that go with it. Uh, but let me tell you what we're gonna do in the meantime as we're waiting for all of this. Both sides of my shed need studs running up this outside truss in order to not only support it, but provide uh, the ability to then secure the outside, um, uh, the outside wall. It's not really a wall. It's the outside siding. <laughs> it's the siding. 
Boy, that's repeatedly redundant. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to work on this side and that side, as well as very probably, very possibly, I don't know, it's an incredibly busy week. If I got just those things done, that would be great. Um, I'm going to put uh, blocking uh, in between all of my trusses in the front and the back. So that's it of episode six. Again, hopefully uh, you're learning as I am as we go through this journey of making a lean-to style shed. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Either way, I win because of the algorithms. <laughs> Leave a comment below, uh, ask a question. We'd love to interact with you. Uh, and if you feel like doing so, share this on social media. If you haven't yet done so, uh, haven't yet done so, subscribe, hit the subscribe button below, and we will see you in the next episode here at Simple Homesteading.